Good morning, Pat Ziemer here with Office Hours for this Tuesday morning. Good morning and welcome, glad you're here. Uh, we've had some difficulties last week with our internet service, so the office hours were abbreviated last week, so I wanna pick up with some questions that we were asked last week. And certainly if you have other questions today, we're here and we'd love to answer them for you. So if you have a question, uh, put it in the uh, comment box here on Facebook and we will certainly answer the question as we go along this morning. And uh, certainly glad you're here and we uh, look forward to uh, helping you. Uh, just for those of you who may not know me, my name is Pat Seamer. I'm the founder and CEO of MagnaWave. I've been dealing with PEMF equipment since 2002, and uh, MagnaWave as a brand has been operating since 2007. So we got uh, several years of activity traveling around the world and working with various uh, PEMF devices, everything from the lowest power devices to the highest power devices. I'm familiar with most of the brands that are out on the marketplace today. So again, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those questions with regard to MagnaWave devices, training, uh, services provided, certification, anything that it may be, specific machine questions, I'd be happy to answer any of those questions. So number one today, let's take a look at the first question we received. It says, any specific supplement that will help with MagnaWave treatment, soft tissue in a horse's foot, specifically Bursa, and the coffin joint area. Well, uh, great supplements that would be beneficial to the horse's overall health in their feet and in the joints would be lubricin, which is ex excellent for lubrication of the area and just overall synovial fluid amounts in the body. Uh, synovial fluid or the HA, hyaluronic acid, is very critical to every cell in the body. It's throughout the body and it is basically the oil or the lubrication of the body. So it's very effective for joint issues uh, and things like that. So what MagnaWave does with particular supplements is it aids in their absorption, in their metabolization in the body. It MagnaWave helps with the ox oxygenation uh, to relieve inflammation and to better allow the body to better heal itself. So MagnaWave being used in conjunction with many supplements is very beneficial as a complementary modality uh, to be used. So specifically to that question, tissue in the foot, bursa, uh, lubricin would certainly help. Uh, MagnaWave uh, stand alone would certainly be beneficial. Why? Because of the oxygenation, it will help take the inflammation out of the bursa and the soft tissue to allow it to uh, be more comfortable less painful. The big issue when you're dealing there with navicular, uh, which is what we're talking about, uh, navicular in the horse's foot or the soft tissue, the bursa, is that sometimes with navicular you have actual deg degradation or breakdown of the bone and which causes the pain and inflammation. Well, we can help relieve that by relieving some of the inflammation, but if there's degradation going on and chips and things like that, uh, it's going to come back because it's an anatomical situation. You have to deal with that however you may. However, if it is just an inflammation of the bursa, which can happen and, and has been uh, found to be the cause of some of these pains, you can do many things to relieve that inflammation, but MagnaWave is very beneficial to help that situation and relieve such inflammation in those areas. Good question. Uh, and that's, that's often a question that I'm asked. How do supplements work with MagnaWave? What about complementary therapies? People have asked, can I use a laser in MagnaWave? Absolutely. Can I use ultrasound in MagnaWave? Absolutely. Complementary therapies are used a lot uh, in, in any type of therapy, whether it's for people, uh, small animals, uh, large animals, whatever the case may be, complementary methods are often uh, the key to making things um, work very well and, and to get the healing that we're looking for or people are looking for in these types of situations. So. Again, if you have any questions, uh, throw them up there. Uh, folks, I'm glad that you're here. I've got uh, several people with us this morning, so if you'd like to say hello, please do. Uh, we'll say hello back. Okay, let's see. I've got some questions that were kind of carried over uh, from last week, but I do have one that uh, came in. It was uh, via, our chat, via our chat, and it was, haven't been able to find pictures on the site to explain what this is. Well, there are, uh, that's a good question. It, it's kind of tough to explain through a picture to show what it is and uh, uh, they want to see specs on the technology and act actually what it is and uh, how much the device costs. Well, as you know, there's devices anywhere from $6,000, $7,000 up to twenty-one dollars or twenty-five, dollars depending on the attachments and the uh, uh, assortment of uh, 
attachments that you receive with the machine. But basically, to answer that question, what is it? It is pulsed electromagnetic field therapy. It provides energy to the body that the cells take on. The my mitochondria is the energy, is the charge of the body, and it helps the overall body's energy uh, to be dealt with and to be, to be improved. Many athletes will use this therapy to basically get themselves warmed up, get their blood oxygen moving through the body, get their muscles ready to go before they go into an athletic type of condition. And that can apply again to animals, people, and, and large animals as well. So through the oxygenation, uh, the pulsed electromagnetic field therapy is what it is. And uh, to, to further explain that for the person that asked the question is it just basically puts a signal into the body that penetrates the blood cell, makes the cell wall more permeable, allowing for better oxygenation, which leads to inflammation reduction, and also at that point, uh, pain relief. So good question. Uh, sometimes questions, you know, people ask the questions over and over, but that's okay. I'm happy to answer them uh, any way that they're presented and uh, when they are presented. So let me go back here and take a look and uh, see uh, questions that may be there. Again, if you have any questions, just please uh, put them up, and I'd be happy uh, to answer them. Um, let me see here. Okay, we've had some changes in the way my camera works, and uh, so I've got this over here now so I can see uh, questions that are being asked. Uh, hi, Cindy. Thank you for being with us. Wendy, good morning. How are you? Uh, is a person, if a person has metal in their body, can they still get MagnaWave treatments? Well, the answer is yes. If someone has metal in the body, they can still receive uh, magnet wave treatments. We always recommend that you put the device on the area where they have it. Maybe it's a shoulder replacement. Perhaps it's, I have a good friend uh, that, that uh, has broken his back a couple of times and he's got screws and needles and plates and rods and all kinds of things in his back and he still gets back pain. And so we treat him and it helps relieve the inflammation and relieve the pain. We always, as I was going to say, recommend that you put the uh, device on the back or on the area, run it at a very moderate setting, make sure they're comfortable and uh, that, they're, that they're comfortable with what you're doing. People are, they don't know. And so they want to experience for a couple of minutes to make sure that they don't have an issue of what it's going to be. If there are screws, this does not have a magnetic pull. It's not like you take a static magnet and you put it up here, oop, something uh, goes to it. Uh, it's, does, it's a magnetic field, not a drawing magnet. So it's not going to move any implant. It's not going to unscrew anything or anything like that. The, the only issue we've ever had is a woman had a port or a, a tip of a needle, as I like to describe it, implanted in her breast as a target for the radiation that they were doing. It was so minute and so small that the energy that was put in caused that to heat up a little bit. So you always want to be comfortable and make sure that, that people are all right uh, with what's with what's going on, but typically metal implants, screws, rods, plates do not cause an issue when using this type of device. Uh, good morning, Bill, Jason, Bill. Thank you uh, for being with us. Uh, look forward to answering any questions that folks may have. Uh, let's see. Uh, I have a horse whose coffin bone is basically gone. Um, what is left is pointing straight down and almost exposed at the bottom. Is there anything I can do to help? Well, certainly uh, by treating such a, uh, put it, providing a session for such an area, obviously there's pain, there's inflammation with regard to that. Certainly the farriers uh, will figure ways of helping with, the, with shoeing and, and support to the foot to support that. As long as it's a condition that can be helped, which is a veterinary decision quite often or veterinarian in conjunction with farriers. Uh, but uh, you can certainly provide relief to the area. Are you, if it's gone, you're not going to regenerate it. If it's, if there's broken and maybe you could help enhance the healing aspect of what's going on. But it's a good question. And it's something that basically uh, not fun to deal with when you have conditions that are that uh, serious uh, when you're dealing with your animals and, and as, as uh, you often have to do. Uh, let's see another question. Uh, has anyone treated a horse uh, that has come down with tetanus and survived. Uh, he's about three or four weeks out now, slowly making process, uh, progress. What's the protocol? Well, with any, we don't treat specific conditions. We treat the body to allow the body be in a position to, to better heal itself. So if the, 
if the doctors have a medication that's being used to help control the disease, uh, I know tetanus it can be very, uh, very uh, bad, and uh, I guess could be fatal in, in certain situations, in particular, uh, perhaps in horses because of their sensitivities or whatever. But uh, the protocol would be overall body treatments uh, to help the oxygenation of the whole body and to set those cells up so they're healthier, so they have the energy that they need to better do their job to help support the body. So uh, specifically, do I know of someone that has treated that case, uh, not had anyone specifically mention it or bring it up to me? Uh, if you're out there and you have dealt with these types of situations, uh, please feel free to uh, tell us what you've done, and uh, we'd love to know that and learn from it. It's, it's amazing uh, in our private group, the, the MagnaWave group, uh, for practitioners uh, where they can go and and draw on the knowledge and the help of other practitioners. It's over 200 people in that practitioner group, which comes, which equates to hundreds of years of experience, uh, hundreds of years of experience with our device. Some of them have been in there for over 10 years. Many of them have been in the group for over 10 years. So you've got, you know, easily well over 100 years of experience just in this group, just since the group has been uh, has been put together. So uh, it, it's interesting to see them get answers and learn from the answers that people share. Got a question here. I treated a horse yesterday that is usually work up to a level three on the Maya. She was antsy when I was treating. I decided to increase the intensity to see what would happen. Muscle movement was huge, but she settled right down. Is this common? Well, uh, great question. And uh, certainly the MagnaWave used on muscle areas will, in, particularly if there's stress in the area, can show muscle movement. You will, that's one of the ways that you gauge stress. A doctor may look at it differently uh, from a diagnostic uh, point of view, but when you find movement there that's showing you that there is some stress in the area uh, that the machine is working to help the body uh, relieve. And so, yes, if you're treating at a three uh, with a Maya and you move it up a little bit and you get a lot of movement, yes, that is normal. And uh, and yes, it should, would show you. If you took the butterfly loop or the paddle and moved it over the area, you could pretty much narrow down to where the stress is to the size of the paddle. As you move over the horse with this coil, at one area, it's, there's nothing happening. You move it two inches and you'll get muscle movement. You'll get skin, you'll get palpitation. And that shows you uh, where the sensitivity is in the body. Um, it, you don't, and, and this is an interesting question, you don't want to f necessarily force movement of the tissue. However, if you want to give a good massage, to a horse and give some movement as long as the horse is comfortable, you can do it. You're giving a very deep tissue massage when you're doing that. Uh, if you, it's not a case that you don't want to see movement. If you don't see movement, then things are good. But if you run it so low that you don't see any movement, then you don't know where necessarily where the areas of sensitivity are in the body. So a uh, great question, Wendy. So as you treated the horse and you turned it up, you got some muscle movement. That would be the area to concentrate on uh, while uh, providing the treatment. I know I've kind of gone into the treatment overview there. And if you have further questions to that, I'd be happy to, to answer it. And, and but potentially, I guess I will go on. I did touch on this a little bit, but one of the benefits and one of the neat features of this device is that you can use it to show areas of sensitivity. In other words, narrow down where there is some stress in the body uh, that the animal is experiencing. That can be on the neck, on the shoulders, in the knees, on the hips, the top line, wherever it may be, it's a way for you to kind of find out where your horse is having issues. Uh, back in the beginning, I would have veterinarians that would come up and I didn't know they were veterinarians and they would begin to ask me questions and they'd say, here, go go over here and work on this horse and tell me what you see. And I would say, well, I'm going to look for areas of sensitivity and I'd be finished and I'd say, well, I saw something in the shoulder and something back here on the hips. And they'd say, gee, that's exactly what I thought it was going to be or that's what I was thinking. And and then I would realize, yeah, doctor, how'd I do? <laughs> Type of question when you're when you're talking to those folks. But it is very telling in showing us where areas of sensitivity are in the body. When you use larger loops, when you're using the large coil, for example, or the large wings, uh, you're stimulating <clears throat> stimulating a very large area of tissue. 
So you will see a, a large area of muscle mass moving and basically pulsing with the action of the machine. So you're working the whole area. But what you don't know with those large loops is exactly where in that area there may be more sensitivity than others. Now again, the, the large loops are excellent to give a, a overall body treatment really pretty very quickly uh, to provide relief and help uh, to the horse with the large loops. But the, the other attachments are designed to help you pinpoint and treat specific areas uh, in general. So I hope that helps Wendy. Great question. Wendy goes on, uh, more interested in her reaction of settling down at a higher setting. She was antsy at a lower setting with muscle movement, but the higher level uh, settled her disposition, but muscles were really moving. I was using the equine wings. Okay, same thing. Sometimes if you're, if you're using the, the, the device on a lower setting with the, the loops, for example, and the horse is moving, the horse could be telling you. We don't know what the horse is, is doing, but it's kind of like um, when you're getting a massage. If someone is rubbing your back and you're kind of going, oh man, that is great. And you're kind of moving around into it. Oh yeah, get into that shoulder. That type of thing. Well, the horses will do the same thing. I always say that walking around is one thing. Walking away is something, something else. In other words, if a horse is kind of moving and, and stepping around with you, that's okay. If the horse is uncomfortable, it's going to walk away. Same thing for a small animal. Qu quite often we'll treat cats and, or we'll work with sessions on cats and the cat's there and it's being treated and it's going on. It's loving it. All of a sudden cat gets up and leaves. Cat's had enough. Cat's happy. And the a horse can do the same thing. Person can do the same thing. You, you treat them. Okay, I'm, I'm good. Thank you very much. And they get up and go. A person can tell you I'm comfortable. That's great. A horse or a cat or a dog on the other hand, all they will do is when they're when they're satisfied, they'll get up and leave. I'm not, you know, if you give them more energy than they're comfortable with right now, they won't let you do it. They're going to get up, get up and leave. So the reaction is, as you turned it up a little bit, it was going deeper. It was getting to the place where the horse was saying, thank you <laughs> for coming there. The fact that the tissue was moving, I always tell people, they'll say, oh my gosh, that was so much movement on the tissue. I had to turn it down. My response is, look at the eye. If I go up and look at the eye of the horse, and the horse is very calm, sitting there on, with their head potentially drooping, and we've got a lot of movement back on the hips, that's okay. That's fine. If you turned it up too high, the horse is going to look at you like, that's a little much, or I'm, I'm going to walk away. So, it, you know, it, it, the reaction that you see is not necessarily the reaction that's being received with comfort uh, by the client. Uh, I've had situations, I've got a bad knee where I damaged my patella tendon years ago in the ambulance business when I was in another life. And, uh, uh, and, and it always caused me problems. Well, when I would put the coil on my knee, my knee, it would just bounce, but I'd get relief and it didn't hurt, but it was just really moving as I would turn the machine up. So those are things that you learn over time. I can sit here and tell you, Tom, blue in the face, but until you experience it and work with it, then you'll understand what the, uh, what the, the device is doing and how you're helping your animal or your friend or your client, whoever it may be, feel better, setting themselves up to better uh, heal themselves, let their body better heal themselves. Great questions, Wendy. I thank you uh, for asking them. And, uh, and I, I appreciate that very much. So folks, if you have any other questions, I'd be happy to answer them for you at this time at the best of my ability. If I don't know, I'm gonna call somebody and find out. I, like I said, we've got a, a home, hundreds of practitioners in our private area that in, in this time, in this day and age, they have uh, much more experience uh, potentially than I do because I, I traveled the world and traveled the United States for years treating thousands of horses, dogs, and people. And, uh, but in my role today, more active in the office as, as the business has, has changed, my practitioners are out treating things and getting deeper. And, and really with, with the way things are going, we're, we're really exposed and, and doing more work today and, and more specialized areas in association with veterinarians or farriers or uh, other types of practitioners to help them get at things that back in the day, we were just making the horses feel good.
and we knew that we were making them feel good in the hips. But now, wow, when we look at some of the wounds that have been dealt with and some of the, some of the uh, areas of where conditions that are addressed, but we're not addressing the condition, all we're doing is addressing the overall body's uh, energy levels so it can better deal with those conditions. But it's amazing to see what good oxygenation, the miracles that good oxygenation and blood flow can do or allow the body to be enhanced to help the body in its healing process. Uh, again, great questions, and uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, tetanus, uh, that's the one we did a moment ago. Uh, this may be an odd question, but anyone has anyone noticed uh, hair drying out? Seems that the more I give treatments, the more my hair dries out. At first, I blame it on the weather change, but it seems to be more frequent the more I treat. Thoughts or solutions? I've never experienced anything like that particularly, but certainly our body, body chemistries are different from animal to animal, person to person, and so could there be something uh, going on in your body uh, that you maybe need to address with vitamins or supplements to keep everything uh, the, way it, the way it should be so your hair does not dry out? Uh, never really uh, experienced anything like that. Uh, great question. Uh, certainly, I get asked a question I want to um, try to answer. But what I would look at is your overall hydration, uh, the uh, intake of, of what you need in your body to, to keep everything fluid, supple. Um, I maybe look at some lubricant to help the overall lubrication of your body uh, to be in place. Uh, and that I think that you'd find that very beneficial as well. Uh, I know that that question was asked and, that, and it was also put into our certified group and uh, a lot of uh, uh, responses were received to that. Uh, and I have another question here. I'm feeling limited with my semi. How do I move up to a higher powered machine? Well, Brenda, we'd be happy to help you with that uh, here at the office. Uh, you know, a lot of that when, you know, there are different levels of machines. There are different powers of machines. And that's really, Brenda, you've asked a very good question because people will ask us, what is the best machine for what I want to do and what I, how I'm going to use it. And so the question, the question comes when you look at the bigger machines, for example, uh, if you take the max machine and then you compare it to the semi machine, the semi machine basically uh, is a half or, or uh, so of the max machine. It's actually a little different than that. The semi is half of the Maya and the Maya is 80%, 85% of the max. So, but, uh, when you look at when we were talked about earlier questions today, someone says they're treating at a three, uh, they treat at a four. Rarely does anybody ever turn these devices up as high as they can go. Maybe certainly the max gives you more uh, uh, variety or more ability with the higher settings if you're dealing with foot problems or you're dealing with knees or you're dealing uh, with bone issues that you can take more energy and put it into the area to gain potentially a, a better or a faster result with the healing uh, that the body is using uh, to heal itself. So when you take the semi, and so it, it's limited, it's high, uh, again, is about half of the, of the Maya machine and 40% and of the Max machine. You would be in the realm where most people treat most of the time, but when you get in those specific situations, it just means you need to treat longer. So if you're treating an abscess, for example, instead of six to eight minutes, you might treat it eight, you might treat it 16 to 20 minutes if you're doing an abscess. Or, or a knee thing with the semi. You're really not limited, you're just, your, your time changes. But uh, depending on the scope of your practice, we, we have a lot of folks, and there's a whole thing I'm going to uh, address and, and I will uh, come back to it. I'll kind of hit on it here in, in a minute, but uh, there, there is a lot of people in their practices, we have practitioners that have the semi, the Maya, and the Max, and they use them accordingly. If they're using the wave wings and they're using the semi, it's excellent to treat overall body tremendous. You, don't, you probably wouldn't even use high using the wave wings on the semi machine uh, as you're doing it. So it's very uh, extensive in its capabilities uh, with the wings. And, and so, but they'll use the semi for these types of treatments. They'll use the Maya for this type of treatment, the Max if they get, need to get into foot problems and that type of thing. So you can certainly uh, upgrade. You can, you know, there's several options available. Uh, Brenda, if you'll call the office, uh, I would guess I would start with Elaine 
uh, 502-742-7868. Give the office a call and we'd be happy to discuss with you and give you your options if you need to look at or want to look at uh, various uh, applications of utilizing utilizing the machines. Uh, great question though and I, I think that's one that, that probably needed to be addressed. So wherever you are on the spectrum, uh, machines have different varieties of how they can be used. Uh, and but rarely is a machine ever used at its highest power. The power is just there uh, should you need it. The real secret is in the signal, how the signal is produced, how this, the, the slew rate, how the signal drops off and the energy that's being supplied to the body. These high power devices allow the cell to be approached internally in the mitochondria and the, the very basic, the ATP production uh, of the cells. And so that's that's what it allows to happen. And that happens at the lower settings as well as it does at the higher settings. The difference being is the length of time that you're treating. And the difference being between our devices, which are high voltage, low frequency devices, and then some of the other devices out there, uh, specifically the one we're asked about a lot is the Beamer or the QRS, though, and those types of devices are low voltage, low frequency. And if you just look at the treatment patterns, uh, they'll talk about treating every day, uh, for 18 minutes or 30 minutes or an hour every day continually, that's where they get their results. Our devices can treat for six to eight minutes on a specific spot uh, once or twice a week, and you're going to get very quick and very happy results with that. So it's a power level. It's a power thing that is needed. All indications do not need all the same power. I mean, I'm sure there's people that have low power machines, and in fact, I'm one that has used low power machines over the years very comfortably for relaxation, sleep, so on and so forth. But if you need to get after something like my knee, or if you're dealing what I'm dealing with, with uh, checking and working with my prostate, uh, the types of treatments that I use there, I want something that's a little stronger that I know is going to penetrate deeply into the body initially. A lot of the low power machines work at the what they call microcirculation level, so it takes a long time to get from the microcirculation to the systemic circulation, whereas our devices penetrate all the way through the body and get to that systemic blood flow and systemic oxygenation very quickly. So, uh, Brenda, great question. Uh, we'd be happy to work with you if you want to talk about that a little further. Okay, uh, Molly asks, I'm very interested in becoming a practitioner. What makes MagnaWave superior to others out there? Well, you know, there are some differences. Uh, Mary, Molly, very good question. There are some differences in devices. Uh, certainly you want, if you look at different devices, you want somebody that's been around for a while, that's been through the, been through the, uh, uh, tribulations of perfecting their their devices and making sure that they're that they're effective. Uh, some devices have only been around for a couple of years. Some people have had their devices where they've changed them every year for several years and and getting to, working to get to a device that that is good. And and uh, and I'll have to say that there's many good devices on the marketplace. To me, what sets devices apart. Uh, is, you know, you, you go to a car dealer. I like this car dealer because of their service. I like this person because they talk to me when I call them. I like this person or this service because they'll answer my questions when I have them. And to me, that's what sets things apart. You want to have good support. You want to have somebody that's going to work with you in your training. You want to have someone that's going to work with you to help you build your business. And and those are serious, big implications. I mean, it, it's not it's not easy. And we're and frankly, we're working just really getting our feet wet on 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 continually helping folks develop their business. It's changed. There's a lot more competition out there today. There's a lot more understanding of what's going on. So you need to know more. You know, it's all it it's really depends. On, on how you present yourself, how you know, how you've learned, and, and what kind of support system you have behind you. I've been in sales for many, many years, in fact, my en entire career, career. And, and I learned early on that if someone asked me a question that I didn't know, they didn't mind if I didn't know the answer. What they really liked is if I could say, look, I don't know, but I've got somebody over here, I'm going to find out and get you the answer. I would learn and they would get the answer that they wanted. So what sets us apart, I believe, is we've been doing this since 2002. We have a great support staff here at the, at the MagnaWave offices with, with people, training people in the office on hand to train, train you personally, to answer your questions. We've got over 300 practitioners around the country who come together in a private portal to share and answer questions among themselves so they can go out and better provide 
their services to their clients. And so it, it comes down to clients are going to buy from someone or going to use your services if they know that you believe in what you've got and they can see it. And, and then you know that what the results can be because you've talked to people who know how to approach those things. That's the important thing. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing this morning. When I was in school, I'd go see my professors and say, hey, I'm having a problem with this or I've got a question with that in, at, when they'd post their office hours. And so we want to be here uh, not only during this time, but during all through the day. I mean, the phones ring. In the, in the horse world, in a lot of these situations, the phones ring 24 hours a day because whatever time it is in Germany or in Dubai or wherever it may be, Australia or in the United States, horse people are working when they're working. Small animal folks are the same way when they have questions and things they want to have, want to have answered. And certainly in the, in the human world, it's a little easier uh, because people are more accustomed to the eight to five type of situation. But we're here to answer the questions for you. And so to me, my recommendation to you um, is really uh, look at it as family. We look at it as family. We want to have a culture that is comfortable for our practitioners. And that's, that's really what we offer to try to set ourselves apart to be uh, to be good and, and good for our practitioners and our and our customers. So uh, Molly, great question. That wasn't a setup. <laughs> it's on there. You folks can see it right there on, on the page. But uh, <clears throat> excuse me, very good, very good question, uh, Brenda. You're welcome. So folks, if you have any other questions, I'd be uh, happy to answer them for you. We got a few minutes to go here. We were a little late getting started. Uh, best laid plans when I try to get my cameras and everything working in the morning. I think gremlins come in here in the evening and change my lights and do things and make things work not the way they're supposed to. But at any rate, uh, I'm very happy that you're here. I don't see any other questions uh, uh, that have come up and uh, the question boxes aren't uh, busy at this point in time. You know, it, um, it it's fun uh, to do this and it's a very learning uh, for me as I hope it is for you. Uh, it causes me many times to think back, how did we do this, what did we do uh, over here to treat, so on and so forth. But uh, it's, all, it's a great way for us to learn and, and to be more successful and to better help our clients and the people that we're working with. Or if you're using the machines personally at home, it's a great way to say, oh, I didn't realize. I mean, it's, it, you know, I, I had a guy call me, uh, uh, a fellow call me who, who has a machine. Uh, this, this person is a... Is a uh, producer, a Hollywood uh, television producer, um, very successful show, uh, I believe it started with an S, sign, something, uh, but anyway, uh, this gentleman owns a machine and, and uh, bought it for his dogs, and uh, over the years, and then all of a sudden one day he calls me and says, you know, I got my, my dogs are, are good, and I, I kind of hadn't been using it regularly, and my back's been bothering me so much, and I just remembered I got my machine out, what should I do? And so we talked about how he was to use it on his back, and make himself feel better. And so even in those kind of situations, there's times, and this is where family comes in, uh, Molly, when you talk about it, there's times that you might think of something that someone brings up that the family can help you with ways to uh, make things uh, happy. Uh, what, do we, what does it say? Any mentors available? Well, for sure, uh, if you have a, a practitioner that you're working with, they'd certainly uh, be happy to mentor you. That's what we do here. Uh, when you come in to us and, and join our family, if you will, and become certified and go into the practitioners group, you have over 300 mentors who are available to you to ask those questions. And people do. They'll kind of light up with conversations and, and all of a sudden they're talking to one practitioner and they are more than someone else or they just kind of hit it off for mentors. If you specifically want a mentor, uh, we can help arrange that as well. Uh, there are people that are certainly happy to, uh, happy to aid in, in that situation. But on any given day at our office, uh, when the phone rings, there are uh, one, two, three, four, five people in the office who are professional practitioners who have uh, been around this for a number of years and are here to mentor and answer any questions that you may have. Great question, uh, Molly, with regard to mentors. Uh, thank you for, for asking that question. So, folks, any other questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I have another meeting I need to run to here in just a couple of minutes, so we will be uh, saying good goodbye. 
Uh, we'll be back at 2 o'clock this afternoon. I do office hours twice a day on Tuesdays. It's typically a slow day for a lot of folks, regardless of, of their industry. It's a, it's a good day to uh, get in and potentially ask some questions. Of course, these office hours broadcast stay live on or stay on Facebook, so you can come back and reference them. Uh, we will use the material and use it uh, for practitioners uh, in, on their sites and so forth. So uh, it, the information is here for you to glean any time that you'd uh, like to have it. So let's see if uh, no other questions. I think perhaps uh, we'll be uh, saying uh, we'll see you and we'll be back the, uh, this afternoon for office hours at 2 o'clock. And then Thursday on our Thursday MagnaWave Wellness webinar, uh, we'll be talking with Woody Blackburn, a professional golfer. I, I, I'm hoping that uh, uh, Rosie Napravnik, uh, professional racehorse jockey, now retired, will be with us. Dr. Jerry Dreesen will be with us. Dana Ives, a practitioner who has been working with a lot of doctors and professional athletes uh, in the Florida area, will be with us. And we're going to be talking about uh, MagnaWave PEMF and professional athletes. And that can encompass anything from people that run marathons to athletes on the football field like the Tennessee Titans who use uh, three of our devices in their training regimen uh, to professional golfers uh, who are using our equipment. And we'll talk about that a, a little on Thursday and other athletes from small animals to horses to the horses riders. So uh, it should be a very interesting webinar. Thursday, 2 o'clock, the MagnaWave Wellness Webinar this week. We'll be dealing with MagnaWave PEMF and professional athletes. So we hope that you'll tune in for that and join us uh, at that point in time. So uh, no other questions are up. Thank you so much for being with us. We look forward to talking with you in the future. Have a great day.